now about to witness the Mud Mud experience. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another music analysis video. Today we're looking into the meaning and nuances behind Tyler the Creator's 2019 album, Eagle. Before we get into that though, let's give some context on what was happening before the release of the album. Coming off his 2017 success, Flower Boy, Tyler seemingly went straight back in the studio to develop music around a new concept, that being one centred around love, loss and struggle. Throughout his past couple albums, that being Cherry Bomb and Flower Boy, Tyler really started to bloom as an artist, as well as a person, with his increasing age leading him to have this newfound maturity and control over his art. After the release of Flower Boy, Tyler talked with radio host Shane Powers, who was featured on both his previous albums, and talked about some of the problems he had with his past work, and how he had started to cave to his fans' expectations and feed into what people thought he was supposed to sound like as an artist. If you could take back one song you made. Buffalo. When I made Cherry Bomb, I said, damn, <clears throat> they're going to probably hate all these songs. Let me make one that's kind of sounding like Tyler. And the, the, even the delivery, I just hate it because I know it was forced. And I know it was for a reason out of me. It was for. You were for doing him. it for, for what <clears throat> not normally it. what you just. It's not what I wanted to do at the moment. I was doing it for fans because I knew that album was going to probably throw them for a loop. And I hate that song and I wish I didn't do it and I deleted the video. So we can tell from that clip that Tyler was perhaps not getting sick of the type of music he was making, but much like all great artists, was finding an interest in exploring new styles and approaches when tackling his craft. We had seen this change occurring and developing naturally ever since the release of Cherry Bomb, which was criticised heavily upon its release simply because the audience and critics didn't fully understand what Tyler was trying to go for, as it was the biggest switch up in style in his whole career up to that point. That's not to call the album a masterpiece, however it's clear to see it was unfairly judged, and I assume Tyler thinks this as well, with it being the only album in his discography which got a second release in a form of a deluxe edition with all the instrumentals included. Cherry Bomb was the start of a new creative direction for Tyler, straying away from the rap and hip hop side of his work and instead focusing more on things like singing instead of rapping and having a more synth and neo soul influence on his music. This fully bloomed in Flower Boy, with Tyler doubling down on this new direction this time having all his fans and critics understand his creative process and praise him for it. This led to Tyler not only being as popular as he'd ever been up to that point in his career, but it also seemed like it was the most freedom he had ever experienced with his craft. He was at a level where he didn't have to pigeonhole himself into a style or change anything at the request of someone else's wishes. And with this mindset being present throughout the entire recording process during 2017 to 2019, his most commercially and critically successful album, Igor, was released on May 17th, 2019. The album contains 12 tracks, with one of them being a 15 second interlude, and as I mentioned at the start, touches on themes of love, loss, struggle and jealousy, all centred around the idea of getting into a relationship with someone who isn't as interested in you as you are to them. This gets revealed throughout the album, with Igor itself gradually manifesting into its own character as the album goes on, however we'll get to that later on. For now, let's start off with the first track on the album, titled Igor's Theme. Much like the basic and gritty looking album cover, the song opens the album up with a blank, heavy, distorted bass resonating through our speakers. It lasts a while, taking 24 seconds to get into the song properly with the introduction of the booming drum samples, making me think that this intro serves as a form of immediately giving the listeners an idea of the style Tyler's going to be striving for on this album, almost like he's trying to leave them in this pure distortion for a while to wipe their minds of any expectations and bring them into the world of Eagle. The only word that is uttered in this intro are what. This could be Tyler acknowledging this change in his style, and maybe trying to predict or match the audience's reaction to his new musical direction. The bass is an important aspect of the entire album, as it stays with us throughout our journey through Eagle, manipulating and manifesting itself in different ways, however, it's always there in the background. Outside of a musical sense where it could have been an audible motif Tyler wanted to employ on the album, it could also represent Tyler's thought process, and the act of trying to make himself happy and enjoy his time with his loved one, despite having these dark, cynical thoughts constantly looming in the back of his mind. Having this ongoing doubtfulness and concern over his loved one's feelings towards him. The next lyrics impose another motif which we'll see through the album, which is the act of running. This can be interpreted in multiple ways. For example, there's the obvious act of physically running, propelling yourself forward with your legs, building up energy, making your heart pump, which applies to this but it can also represent the act of running from your emotions, not confronting doubtful and harsh thoughts because you're worried it will result in something bad happening in the physical world as opposed to your mind. 
The word heaven is also repeated in the next lines, perhaps telling us that with the act of running, Tyler's trying to get himself to a place of calm and enlightenment, much like how heaven is commonly seen. We get one more line in this intro with the phrase he's coming, with the he most likely referring to the Igor character itself. We then get brought to the chorus, which is rapped by Lil Uzi Vert, where he repeats the line, riding around town they can feel this one, which could be a form of Tyler hyping himself up once again, essentially putting all of his trust into his fans to accept this new musical style that he's going for, and to embrace it. It's almost like a hype man with how it's repeated over and over again, stating the point that this won't be like how Cherry Bomb turned out, and that people are going to feel this one. We then hear the repetition of the phrase, I've got my eyes open, which again leads us to think of Tyler in this enlightened and all-powerful powerful state in relation to his music, going to more ambitious and creative places than he's ever been before. However, in relation to the actual core theme of the album, having his eyes open could also be referring to how enlightened Tyler would feel when getting into a new relationship with someone. Having his thought processes be matched by someone else, and to be understood on a deeper level would naturally lead to this form of clarity with one's thoughts. And for the most part, outside of some different interpretations and phrasing of these lyrics, these messages are simply reinforced in the lyrics throughout the entire rest of the song. There's certain points in the song, much like other songs in the album, where the instrumental reinforces the emotions and feel of the lyrical content. I'm not going to play the songs here as I'd be copyright claimed, but as an example, the breakdown bit of this song around two minutes in perfectly shares this ethereal enlightened state of mind which was already described in the lyrics. This happens all throughout the album, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've listened to the album as well, and can agree that the instrumental fits perfectly with the story and themes that are being conveyed. We then move on to the second song, Earthquake, which sets the tone, mood, and message of the album bluntly, with the entire song being about the struggles Tyler is facing with his lover. The song starts off with the lyrics, for real this time, with Tyler telling himself that the relationship he's got himself into is a real one, and not like anything else he's been in or experienced before. With this enlightened state he's found himself in, he's built up confidence and is putting all of his cards on the table to let his lover know that the relationship they have together is going to last. In the chorus, however, we can see a contradiction in the lyrics, as we can see that his lover is making his earthquake and making his heart break. Much like in a lot of relationships, everything isn't always going to be happy and joyous. There are dark spots, doubts, and distrust, which is naturally shared. However, Tyler can't seem to get past this, and as a result, much like an earthquake causes things to do, their relationship is starting to fall apart. Tyler's touched on this kind of heartbreak many times before, most prominently in songs like I Fucking Hate You, She, and Answer. We then get taken to the refrain, where we can really see this degradation of their relationship, where Tyler starts begging his lover not to leave and that whatever bad thing that happened is his fault. The word fault is also used here as a double entendre, not only to describe the fault which Tyler made in their relationship, but also continuing with the earthquake theme, it describes faults within the Earth's crust. These faults are simply cracks along the Earth's crust, which can be massive or small. What we can see happens with these time and time again, however, is that if enough tension were to build up along one of these faults, only to be suddenly released, this is what would result in what we know as an earthquake. It's a perfect metaphor to use for this song, summing up how Tyler and his lover have kept having these struggles time and time again, however haven't been able to deal with them properly at the time. They've been left to linger on these sour thoughts, which has degraded their trust trust and overall chemistry with each other, building up so much tension between one another that it's led to an earthquake, where their relationship is much like a wobbly building about to collapse. At the end of this refrain, we can see that if this earthquake were to occur in their relationship, resulting in a breakup, Tyler still would need this other person in order to continue with his life. He would feel guilty that he messed everything up, much like we saw in the previous lyrics where he repeatedly says that it's his fault. We then get taken back to the chorus, before being brought to a verse rapped by Playboy Carti. Now I could try break down and analyse the meaning behind this, but as Tyler said himself, Carti vocals aren't even meant to be transcribed, so whatever meanings you take away from his verse are completely valid. At the very least, we can assume this verse stays with the theme of the breakdown of a relationship and the struggles that come with it. After his verse, we get taken back to the refrain once again before getting a final verse from Tyler. He starts off by once again saying his lover makes his earthquake, but then follows it up by saying that he doesn't want any confrontation. We can see why their relationship is failing in this moment, as Tyler is not willing to confront the problems that this relationship face, and would rather just leave things as they are. 
Tyler then claims that his lover wouldn't even want his conversation anyway, backing up this idea of how Tyler is striving for this relationship to work much more than this other person is. Tyler appears to be very insecure with how people perceive him, and especially this person in particular, which is backed up in the next line where he says he just needs some confirmation on how his lover feels towards him. He's confronting his fears and anxiety over this confrontation, just to see how this person really feels about him, in order to at least put his mind and his concerns at rest. Throughout the rest of this verse, he essentially repeats this same sentiment, saying he doesn't want any complications in this person's explanation of their feelings. He wants them to be direct and to the point, with no side information, and he also wants them to be 100% truthful and honest with their feelings, most likely because Tyler will be able to tell if this person is lying to him or not. After this, we get taken to the outro, where Tyler continues to yearn for this person's affection, begging them not to leave. Right at the end, we hear a count of one, two, three between each lyric, leading into the next song, I Think, which starts with the number four being repeated. As we'll see in this song, it's a complete switch up from the topic which was touched on in Earthquake. Whereas in that song, it was about this relationship between Tyler and his lover falling apart, it seems that Tyler is so uptight and anxious about what's going to happen in the future, that he starts convincing himself that the problems that have come in their relationship are due to the extent of his love towards this other person. Going into the first verse, we can see Tyler's anxiety presented much more clearly in the lyrics, with him getting more aggressive in lines like, feelings that's what I'm pouring, what the fuck is your motive? This confusion and uncertainty is getting to Tyler, and he starts to lash out, but before he can, we can see him suppress his feelings yet again, where he says in the next lines that he's sorry. Tyler also references the film Call Me By Your Name, a coming-of-age romance film which was released in 2017, all about the relationship between a teenager and his father's assistant. The detail that we can pick out from here though, is that the film breaks down boundaries by presenting the somewhat still sadly taboo subject in many parts of the world, and makes it about a gay relationship, alluding to the many times Tyler threw his sexuality and true feelings into his last project, Flower Boy. I think it was important for Tyler to get this point across, as he constantly breaks the conventions of what a typical masculine man would do in his situation. He uses the colour pink on the front cover, which is typically seen as a more feminine colour. He talks about his emotions and his worries, something that only now has started to be fully embraced in our society, and several other things which we'll touch on later. For now, let's get back to the first verse and look at the lines which follow, describing how this person is a distraction to Tyler and how they're fucking up his ambience. Tyler words these things cleverly to make this somewhat blatant statement still have a sense of ambiguity to them. For example, telling this person that they are a distraction could be seen as a compliment as it shows Tyler can't keep his mind or eyes off of this person. However, calling them a distraction also has negative connotations with it as it almost seems like Tyler doesn't want this person to have that much of an effect on him and that he'd much rather get on with other things but he can't because of the love he feels towards this other person. We can interpret the kind of work he'd rather focus on when he says that's what T's on, which not only tells us literally that's the kind of path Tyler is taking with his life at the moment, but also reminds reminds us of the tee off which occurs at the start of a game of golf, which we also know shares the same name as Tyler's clothing brand. As we move further through this verse, we see another mention of a car and driving, something Tyler's already done several times on this album, and over a lot of his albums in general, most obviously on his last project Flower Boy, which was an entire album focused around a car journey. By saying that this lover drives him cuckoo and not car, it's saying that the accelerating and exciting feeling of speeding in his car is not matched when interacting with this other person. It's a strange dichotomy Tyler has in this song, as he goes back and forth on his emotions, saying something that sounds negative, which could also be seen as a positive, and vice versa. It's perfect though, and I'm sure completely intentional. I'm sure a lot of thought went into the confused and anxious mindset one would have when entering a new relationship with someone. Those first few months, or maybe even longer, it could still be like speaking to a stranger, so it's natural for things like your insecurities, self-worth, and general anxiety to bubble up to the top, as you aren't on the entirely same wavelength as your partner yet. But as we can see from the previous songs, it looks like this relationship is not going to plan. We then get taken to the chorus where Tyler repeats the phrase, I think I've fallen in love, this time I think it's for real. The I think in that showing us his uncertainty over the entire situation. However, he's happy to keep going along with it purely because he knows it will help him. Much like he mentioned on Earthquake, he still feels like he needs this other person to keep on living and being himself. 
Tyler then ponders on how to tell this person how he truly feels about them, but can't seem to come up with an answer at the time. In the post-chorus, it sums up Tyler's thoughts perfectly by telling us that he feels like a nuisance to this other person and puts them up on a pedestal compared to himself. But with that also comes the intense observation and obsession over this person from Tyler, most likely trying to see if they have feelings for anyone else apart from him. Tyler then follows this up with a final short verse, claiming that he's wasting his money in order to get his lover's attention when he knows it should just be a natural process in order to fall in love with someone. He even says here that he's off balance and needs some fixing, showing his confused mindset, making himself feel like an inferior to this other person. He then claims that he's a puppet and his his lover is Jim Henson, who was the creator of The Muppet Show, and basically saying that Tyler is under their control. If this lover of his wanted to take advantage of his wealth, or make him do things that wouldn't actually be good for him, Tyler would just happily go along with it because he's willfully under their control. And that about wraps up this song's lyrical content, with the song then going on to repeat the chorus a couple more times, with a brilliant instrumental break cut in between. After I Think, we get a 15 second interlude, exactly what you run from you end up chasing which despite only being 15 seconds long, holds a lot of weight to the overall themes of the album, and is a more blatant telling of what Tyler is trying to get across. This small interlude is read by Jared Carmichael, the same person who interviewed Tyler coming off of Flower Boy's release for their In Conversation video. The sentiment behind what he's saying in this spoken word passage sums up Tyler's mindset throughout the entire album, and as a result, somewhat similar to Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly poem, this is not the only time we'll be hearing Carmichael's spoken word on the album. As going forward, after several tracks, we can hear the re-emergence of this speech. It quite simply but yet powerfully tells us that all the things we run from in life, the things that spark our anxiety, scare us and worry us, are the exact things we'll inevitably end up hunting down and chasing after. In Tyler's case, he's scared of love, a relationship and the heartbreak that may come with it. However, as Carmichael says, you can't avoid chasing it and giving everything you can. However, there's always an obstacle. It's an empowering message, essentially telling us that despite all the hardships that may come with it, striving and working hard on something is the true way to happiness and enlightenment, as opposed to just giving up and never even risking trying to chase what you want. We come out of this interlude right into the next track, Running Out of Time, where we immediately hear Tyler repeat the title phrase. As you may be able to tell, this song is all about how Tyler is evaluating his relationship and thinking to himself that he's running out of time to get this person to feel the same way he does about them. Even though on the outside everything may appear to be okay, Tyler's mental state with this situation is at a boiling point, so he resorts to putting himself on edge and saying that a breakup is imminent, in hopes that it will make him pull himself together and get the relationship back to a place he's comfortable with. As we can see in this intro, Tyler is still putting the fault on himself, and placing the responsibility on himself to make this person love him, whereas his lover, as we've seen in previous tracks, might just never feel the same way, and instead have affection for another person, which would be completely out of Tyler's control. We start the first verse with Tyler quietly saying secrets, which by the quietness of it might represent Tyler's internal dialogue, feeling like his partner is being untruthful and perhaps unfaithful towards him. Tyler almost has this defeatist attitude going through this verse, essentially telling us that he's almost tried everything he can to make this relationship work, however he's starting to run out of spells and not one of them has come close to working yet. The word spells is also used, alluding to the next track on the album, New Magic Wand, perhaps trying to tell us that issues like this in a relationship can't just magically go away, and with Tyler's defeatist and anxious mindset, not talking with his partner about these things but instead leaving them to linger inside his mind, will just tear this relationship even further apart, as opposed to solving anything. As we continue through this verse, we can see that Tyler is aware that this is not a healthy state of mind to be in, where he starts talking about wading in his partner's water. To wade in their water would be to adapt to this other person's way of living, embracing all aspects of their personality, good or bad. Tyler wants to explore every possible part of his lover's mind, perhaps not just because he wants to, but maybe to quell his insecurities and anxiety-ridden thoughts. The part where we can see that he knows this is not good for him him is in the line don't save, most likely referring to his friends and loved ones around him who are trying to pull him out of this state, however he'd rather ignore their advice and instead swim to the deep end of his partner's thoughts. As we can see though, Tyler acknowledges this and is happy with the act of drowning in his partner's emotions at the expense of his own thoughts and mental health. We then get brought back to the chorus, before giving us a bridge where Tyler describes how he lives in pretend and keeps it buck 50. This is obviously referring to the front he's putting up to the other people that he knows, perhaps worried or just not interested in what they would have to say in relation to this situation. 
This could be referring back to his sexuality and how he used to put up a front by going over the top with some of the more questionably homophobic moments in his earlier discography. We then get brought to the second verse, which starts off with this ongoing theme throughout the album, which we've already seen a few times before, where Tyler doesn't trust that his lover is being open and honest with him, as we can see that he's asking him to take his mask off and stop putting up a front with him. In the next line, we see the introduction of the overall story of this album, which is this insecurity and anxiety mixed in with this idea of his lover being interested in someone else. Tyler says that he needs this other person out of the picture, and that his lover needs to stop lying to him in order to protect this other person in the love triangle. Tyler also claims that he knows the true emotions and feelings of his lover compared to this other person in the love triangle, before again begging this person to take off their Halloween costume and just be real with him. We then start to see Tyler trying to distract himself with other things in order to try put his mind at rest, as we can see him take the attention away in a split second and focus on working on another track on his door, which means digital audio workstation. If you're unaware what a door means, it's simply the application where you create the music and piece it all together, doing things like mixing and mastering. Think Fruity Loops or Ableton for example. Tyler's telling us that his music is not only a way to express his emotions, helping him cope with this troubled situation he's found himself in, but it's also just a form of escape in order to get away from it. However, it's revealed at the end of this verse that Tyler is too self-aware in this situation, and knows full well that he's simply just trying to distract himself, which most likely makes him feel even worse and focus even further on the situation. The song ends with the same sentiment of running out of time being repeated over and over again until the song comes to a close. We then get taken to the song New Magic Wand, where we see the re-emergence of Carmichael's spoken word for the first time since the interlude. In many ways, it does share a similarity to Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly, as much like in that album, the words that are spoken at the beginning of this track represent what this song will be about. It's important to mention now that the New Magic Wand in this song represents a gun, and the thoughts that are expressed in this song all all centre around getting this other person his lover is interested in out of the picture. Carmichael's spoken word backs this up, closing the door meaning to kill this other person to hopefully open up a window of opportunity for his lover to have an interest in him again. We start this track off with a heavy, stabbing bass line, with a sample of what sounds like a triangle, making us think of alarm bells, like something big or bad is about to occur. With the introduction Tyler makes on this track, it's highly possible that this is the Igor character making his first appearance on the album, starting off the first verse with a cackling laugh and an air of confidence. I theorised in my last video that Igor's first appearance was on the ninth track, What's Good. However, after re-listening to the album, I believe this is in fact the first time we see Igor on the album, as the distinction between how Tyler acts on the previous tracks compared to the blatant, maniacal state he shows on this one just makes me think this is Igor finally putting himself in the spotlight. I'll refer to Tyler on these specific tracks as Igor from now on. Igor starts this first short verse off by using a double entendre, referring to the act of taking a photograph and the idea of pictures in general. He starts by showing off his jealousy and insecurity in full, by saying that he saw a picture of his lover and this other person, and that they were too happy for his liking. He continues with this photograph metaphor, by saying the solution to this would be to get the other person out of the picture, because it's fucking up Igor's frame of him and his lover's relationship. He also compares the development of him and his lover's relationship, to the development of a picture, the ones which are put in development fluid and are revealed over time in a red room. In this case, as time's progressed, the picture that's been produced for their relationship has started to go wrong, and a new person has been revealed in his lover's life that wasn't present before. We then get taken to the refrain, where the phrase like magic gone and new magic wand is repeated, showing us Igor's more simple and basic thought process compared to Tyler's, telling us that Igor sees the situation as easy to deal with. With his new magic wand, or rather a gun, in his eyes it would be so easy to fix the situation that it it would also be like a magic power. He thinks all of the problems in their relationship will simply be gone if Igor gets to use this new magic wand on the other person. We then get taken to the second verse, where strangely, Igor starts off by saying that his brother said he's on the spectrum, which most people would automatically assume to be the autistic spectrum. And although this may be the case, as in songs like Death Camp from Cherry Bomb, he has lyrics like, so special my teachers thought I was autistic, it could also be another line referring back to his sexuality, and how throughout his life he's never been entirely sure how he feels towards both men and women, so he would be somewhere on the spectrum between both of these defined roles of being hetero and homosexual. 
We then see pure unbridled jealousy from Igor, something that Tyler wouldn't be able to tell this person in the state that he's usually in, saying that he hates sharing his lover with anyone else and just wants him to himself all the time. He wants his lover's attention and affection all of the time, and it's this controlling attitude which could be driving them even further away from wanting to spend any time with him at all. I look at the character of Igor like a mouthpiece for Tyler's true feelings on this album, not just in relation to the relationship side of things, but also as we'll see in later songs, it gives us a chance to look at aspects like how Tyler truly feels about himself, and the image he's giving off to other people. This leads into the chorus where Igor yearns for this person not to leave him, however with the somewhat uninterested, dull delivery of the line that is given over and over, it shows a deeper, more primal set of emotions that Igor shows but Tyler doesn't. It's pure, unbridled, obsessive fear and jealousy. There isn't any passion in these lyrics, it's the embodiment of anxiety and worry. The repetition of this phrase continues into the third verse of the track, where it starts off with a callback to his previous album Flower Boy. We yet again again come back to this infatuation with cars, with Igor saying he wants to be found in the passenger seat of his lover's car, which is a callback to the line from 911 where Tyler says, that don't mean nothing without you shotgun in the passenger. Igor's taking all of his lover's responses to him in the most negative light possible, claiming that they're purposely being mean and sending mixed messages to him in order to make him feel worried and sad. We can see in the final lines the blatant reference to the magic wand being a gun, by saying that she's gonna be dead because he's just acquired his magic wand. We then get taken to a bridge where it seems that Igor has a moment of calm, starting off by saying he rolls a dice and hits a seven. This is in reference to the game Craps, which is most commonly seen in casinos where players make wages on the outcome of a certain dice roll in order to win something in return. When you roll a 7 in this game, it can either be a win or a loss depending on the timing. However, it's also the most common number you're gonna get. Relating this back to the relationship, it's telling us that it's degraded so much to the point where it could really go either way, and having this new magic wand and the ability to eliminate this other person who's intruding on their relationship could either solve or advance the problems in their relationship, perhaps resulting in a breakup. We then see in these next lines probably the darkest term we've seen so far on the album, where Igor starts describing that his lover is at the point now where he's gonna have to pick a side. Those two sides being either staying with him or going off with this other person. This choice, however, cannot come with his lover having free will. As Igor mentions that if this other person doesn't disappear, and in fact his lover does choose this other person over him, it will lead to both of them being killed by this new magic wand. Igor puts his lover in an incredibly difficult situation, as by saying things like you're under oath means that Igor still wants his lover's full honesty when picking between the two of them, it will naturally put tons of pressure upon his lover to instead choose Igor instead of the other person, purely because of their fear of being killed because they were just being honest and open with their feelings. Igor's being completely contradictory, but doesn't care. He's being willfully ignorant to how much pressure is being put on his lover in this situation in order to make sure that they stay and don't leave. This leads us right into the fourth and final verse, where we see Igor bring the first real hard rap verse on the album, and this verse is one riddled with back and forths in a thought process and a permeating theme of contradictory thinking throughout. It starts off with Igor telling this person to take a look at themselves in the mirror and see that the implications they're sending his way are so obvious to him. The implications Igor is referring to are most likely ones relating to how his lover doesn't want to be with him anymore and would rather go off with this other person. Igor has the same worries as Tyler, but in comparison to Tyler, Igor makes a clear distinction by saying that although his one fear in life is being without his lover, he's not going to be willfully controlled and toyed around with. He instead wants to take action into his own hands and deal with it efficiently. For example, with this new magic wand that he now has. He then says that it has nothing to do with this other person, but then immediately contradicts that by first bigging himself up by saying that he's a hawk in the gym with his eyes on the prize, the prize obviously being his lover. However, he's got a weight on his chest, referring back to this broad that he mentioned a few lines ago. Igor then compares his lover to the frame of a picture, showing us that at the most basic basic level of his living, he needs his lover in order to feel like his time spent alive is worth living. But with this, he's also saying that his lover's relationship with this other person would not be able to come to fruition if the other person was dead and buried. 
it removes the framework of their relationship entirely because it simply can't happen without one of the people being there. It's a bold statement to make, much like this entire track. It's a bold statement to make, much like this entire track, which masks itself with a fantasy type of title and wordplay, despite it under the surface being quite a brutal analysis of how Eagle wants to kill this other person, feeling it will solve everything. However, he claims he's not afraid to say these things, and in fact that he wants to blast these thoughts out to the world, as it feels like he's doing himself justice. He then goes into even further detail about the things he wants to have with his partner, such as sharing last names, obviously referring to marriage, and also claiming that he's in his right mind, but says that he is purely on the basis that he keeps it on a high, claiming that he's happy and energetic, both of which we know not to be true under the surface. Eagle then mentions musical artist Janis Joplin, someone who was known for mixing folk rock with aspects of blues and psychedelia, as well as having a powerful and commanding voice which blared out heartfelt and gut-wrenching lyrics. Igor is comparing himself to her in terms that he's blasting out his honest, emotional lyrics to the world. However, it could also have another layer of comparison, referring back to his sexuality once again, with Janis Joplin famously showing no boundaries when it came to her sexual partners, having sex and relationships with both men and women. In these final lines, we can see the build-up of all the talk Igor had throughout this song come to a culmination, as he lays out bluntly his plan on going to kill this other person. He mentions busting through the door and getting the job done like retirement, with no need for masks. These lyrics all refer to the lack of emotion Igor feels when planning these things out, saying that killing this person will be comparable to a job that just needs to get done, and it will feel like retirement because he'll most likely never need to do anything like this again. The lack of masks in this situation could also be literal and metaphorical, telling us that maybe Igor wants this other person to see his face as the last thing before he's killed, but also may tell us that whilst killing this person, his emotions and his mindset will be pure. When doing this, Igor is putting up no front or faking his emotions in any way because there's no need to. Therefore, there's going to be no mask required. He ends the song off by claiming that his lover looks concerned, perhaps realising the lengths Igor will go to get his affection. However, this you could also double down as us, the listeners, and how he's basically just made a whole song about how he wants to murder someone in cold blood and revealed it throughout the track. We then get taken to the next track, A Boy Is A Gun, which immediately starts off with Tyler being reintroduced, asking not to be shot down, most likely talking about how his lover is shooting down all of his chances to get close with them again. The title of the track is most likely referring to the lover from Tyler's perspective, claiming that a boy has the potential to shoot down someone's feelings and emotions just like a gun can. However, it could also be self-referential, as we just came off of New Magic Wand, a song which disguised Igor's physical gun that he was willing to use on the third person in this love triangle. Another thing about the title of the track is the obvious counterpoint to the 1971 film A Girl Is A Gun, and replacing it with a boy, perhaps once again showing us more clearly Tyler's sexuality and sexual preference. From the refrain, we get brought straight to the chorus, where it seems like Tyler makes another complete contradiction, making us think more on this Igor character. The chorus starts with you're so motherfucking dangerous, which as we already know, his lover can only be dangerous in terms of how they make Tyler feel in relation to his emotions. In the grand scheme of things, everything his lover may be doing, even if that does mean trying to get away from Tyler and end the relationship, it's all reasonable and justified from an outside perspective. In reality, Tyler is the one who's dangerous, but it seems like he's genuinely clueless at this prospect, almost like he was completely oblivious to the previous song where he threatened to kill both his lover and the other person. However, I believe this is entirely intentional. If you've seen my previous videos about Tyler's projects, mainly my analysis on the wolf storyline, it's clear that Tyler likes to play around with different characters and alter egos that are floating around in his mind. In the Wolf trilogy, you had characters like Sam, Dr. TC, and Ace the Creator, who were all independently their own characters with their own goals and motivations, despite them all being played solely by Tyler. I believe Tyler has re-employed that style of storytelling on this album, making this Igor alter ego an entirely separate character from Tyler, despite them still living solely inside Tyler's mind. What I'm trying to say is that Igor could be the manifestation of Tyler's most psychotic thoughts, and that while Igor has taken control of Tyler, and in turn taking control of whatever song he appears on, Tyler's thoughts are instead closed off, with him being unaware of what's happening. 
In the first verse, for another time on this album, we see a case of Tyler being insecure and feeling like his lover is putting up a front with him, as he starts off by telling them to take their hoodie off and stop hiding their face from him. However, whereas before Tyler was begging and pleading his lover to stay, there now seems to be an overall resentment towards his lover, because in Tyler's eyes, he's taken too long to give him what he wanted. As the verse continues, we can see Tyler starting to come to a realisation of this toxic relationship, with the line, how come you're the best to me, I know you're the worst for me, holding a large impact. As it shows us that Tyler is no longer trying to resolve things, or even being willfully ignorant. He's realised that the chances of this relationship working out are slim, so instead lays the facts out on the table in a last ditch effort, hoping it will resolve some things between them. A similar line is presented on the song I Fucking Hate You off of his album Wolf, in the line, crazy who makes me the happiest can make me the saddest, which shares the exact same sentiment as this line. Tyler continues through this first verse with the same honesty, mixed with an inkling of paranoia, as it feels inevitable at this point that the relationship is about to collapse. He also uses very clever wordplay, somewhat similar to the style of Kanye, saying things like, boy you're sweet as sugar, diabetic to the first degree, showing the positives and negatives of the relationship in a more interesting and engaging way than just laying it out bluntly. After this first verse, the chorus and post-chorus is repeated once more, until we're brought into the second verse. This second verse divulges into how Tyler really has a lack of interest in dealing with this situation, as well as his lover in general at this point. It's a strange counterpoint to make, as the title and chorus of this song is essentially all about Tyler pleading for his lover not to shoot him down and break his heart, despite him showing here that he doesn't really care. Perhaps this is an illusion, an implication, that Tyler is in fact the one putting up a front to his lover now, in hopes that it will create a form of distance and lust that will make his lover want to go back to him. He shows this lack of interest by asking his lover these rhetorical questions at the start, trying to make them feel bad and unwanted. Tyler doesn't care at all about this person's feelings at this point, but still wants them to care about his, which is completely unfair and unjustifiable. Tyler is the one in the wrong here, and he's gone about this whole situation in the complete wrong way, letting his fears and anxieties get the better of him in the situation. He even says that he's not willing to take his lover home, and they're gonna have to call a cab, which is a big moment. As Tyler has mentioned in previous songs that he longs to sit in his lover's passenger seat, and now that he's got the chance for his lover to sit in his passenger seat, he still doesn't care. It then becomes confusing when within the same verse, Tyler once again flips this idea on its head by telling his lover not to go anywhere, and that he wants them close to him. Tyler even flips for a third time by getting aggressive at his lover for inviting him to breakfast and having this third person in the love triangle also be invited as well. There is zero trust Tyler can show towards them at this point, as he already feels in his mind that he's been played by his lover. We then go back to the chorus, however before we get taken to the third and final verse, we're first taken to a bridge, where instead of singing or rapping, Tyler instead just quietly mumbles how he feels bluntly. He essentially describes and explains the title of the track, saying that he's comparing his lover to a gun because he likes to know there is a form of safety and protection by his side at all times, however with something that powerful that there also comes a natural danger towards himself. We then get taken into the third and final verse, one which marks a large transitionary point in the album. It starts off with Tyler saying that they're bringing their relationship up, with the they he's referring to possibly meaning two things. It could be referencing once again this other person in the love triangle bringing up how they feel about Tyler and his lover's relationship, however I think in this case it could also double as Tyler touching on his sexuality, and talking about how his fans and listeners keep bringing it up. This could also be backed up in the next lines where he says how he doesn't care about their opinion, either referring to the fans thoughts on his sexuality, or this other person in the love triangle's thoughts on Tyler's lover. However, more than anything, what we see here is a definitive stand that Tyler takes. It doesn't matter if it's the right or wrong thing to do, Tyler for once stops thinking about things and instead takes action, and says that he's gonna take what he's gotten from this relationship and leave it as friends. He then proceeds to make a callback to the song See You Again from Flower Boy, by saying that he doesn't want to see his lover again. He does this to emphasise the point that he still thinks his lover is his perfect dream person, but the relationship has just gotten toxic, and he's had to find out the hard way that things don't always work out the way you want them to. He ends off the song by repeating the phrase, stay the fuck away from me, to really drill the point into his lover that he's done with them. However, the final time he says it, he says that he's not going to repeat himself, despite that being literally what he was just doing. It's just another one of the many times now that we've seen Tyler contradict himself out of pure passion and 
and emotion for his lover. The song quietens down as we're brought to the outro, which leads us into our next song, Puppet. We've had reference to this puppet-like state of mind that Tyler has put himself into frequently throughout the album already. We can see from how the song goes straight into the first verse, with Tyler delivering these extremely fast lyrics saying what he wants, it seems like he's contradicted himself yet again and has gone back on his word of wanting his lover to stay away from him. The four beats at the start of the track may also signify Tyler's heartbeat, quick and erratic, realising what he's just done on the previous track. We can see from the first lyrics in this track that Tyler is following exactly what Carmichael mentioned on the interlude. In the previous track, Tyler ran away from his lover and tried to keep his distance. However, just like the title of the interlude, exactly what Tyler ran from, he's ended up chasing only moments later, regretting how he handled the situation. Tyler feels so regretful and terrible with how he handled the situation that he simply starts off the track listing all of the things he wants to be able to do with his lover, but most likely can't now due to how he acted. He even mentions how other than oxygen and financial freedom, he literally can't think of anything else that he wants in order to keep on living happily. He's already living healthily and has got the ability to get the things he wants whenever he wants, but as he says, without his lover's company, nothing feels as good. Unlike his other songs, Tyler opts to go straight into the second verse rather than going to the chorus, which could again represent how Tyler wants to just get all of his thoughts out as quickly as possible as this last ditch effort of still maintaining what's left of their relationship. He starts this second verse off by this time thinking about all of the things his lover may want, listing off things like money, some time alone, or some physical affection. This lover is Tyler's main priority, even comparing himself to Santa, saying he'd do and give anything in order to please them. We end off this second verse with Tyler questioning if he has any free will left, or if he just thinks he does and instead is being subconsciously controlled by his lover at his own accord. We then get taken to the chorus, where the same sentiment is once again repeated constantly, of Tyler feeling out of control and being taken control and manipulated by his lover. And in many ways, Tyler is right in assuming this, as throughout the entire album he's rarely taken a second for himself, to consider what he needs to do to make things better. He instead chooses to focus on his lover and how to fix their situation, even though the key to fixing it may just be some time dedicated to himself. Then in the third verse, we see the appearance of Kanye West, with another verse like Carty's where Tyler has intentionally told fans that it cannot be transcribed. Due to this prospect, especially since it's coming straight from Tyler himself, I'm once again not going to attempt to analyse his verse, and instead leave it up to your guys' interpretation of what you think is being said, and what message you think Kanye is trying to get across. We can assume that the placement of Kanye here though, especially with the somewhat godlike lyrics we can extract from the verse, with Kanye referring to Tyler as his son, may have something to do with Kanye being a huge and prominent influence on not only Tyler, but most rappers in today's generation. With other rappers like Kendrick Lamar, Travis Scott, Childish Gambino, Chance the Rapper, J. Cole, Drake and Kid Cudi all citing Kanye as a huge influence on their work, and that's just to name a few. With Kanye's verse ending with him being slowly faded out, we hear Tyler's mumbled lyrics fade back in before we are brought to a slowed down instrumental break at the end, leaving the track off on this almost depressing note where it seems Tyler's completely lost and doesn't know what to do to help himself, his lover, or anyone else at this point. However, right at the end of the track, we're given some hope in the form of another line from Carmichael's spoken word, saying that at some point you come to your senses, making us hope the next song, What's Good, will be exactly that. Tyler for the first time truly opening his eyes and enlightening himself on the situation without his sad emotions getting in the way. When we enter this track, it's almost immediate by the ominous dark synth intro that this will once again be Igor making a comeback on the album. This is then confirmed as we go straight into the first verse when we hear Igor telling Tyler to turn his lights on, essentially waking him up in order to get Tyler's mindset back to one of truth. I'm gonna just real quick play a part from my last Igor video which sums up my thoughts quite well and what I overall think the character of Igor represents as a whole. There's one big question that was on a lot of people's minds however, and that is who exactly is Igor and where does he actually show up on the album? Igor's first appearance on the album is surprisingly on the ninth track, What's Good. In the previous track, Puppet, Tyler seems to be at his lowest point in the album so far, talking about how he's basically become a shell of a person 
Jordan due to being so infatuated with his love. However, with the next track, we come back to another bombastic, overblown sound, with Tyler seemingly having a complete change in attitude. Igor is a character who deeply suppresses his feelings, and turns everything up to 11, making me think this is definitely an allegory for Tyler's previous attitudes on his albums. With hindsight, we can now see that the incessant use of homophobic slurs, and lines like, I'm not gay, I just want to boogie to some Marvin, was pretty much Tyler trying very hard to appear as straight, obviously being intimidated by how people's perception of him could be changed if he reveals his true feelings. It's not a surprise, Igor has the attitude of giving the fans what they want, with large rap verses and a more distorted, harsh beat. As by Cherry Bomb, in songs like Buffalo, Tyler confirmed this is pretty much what he was doing himself. This is especially helpful when going into this track, as this is Igor's biggest appearance on the album in total. Igor continues through this first verse to big himself up at any opportunity he can, saying that unlike Tyler, or as another example, the basketball player Sam Bowie, Igor doesn't get stage fright or cave to anxiety. Igor then ends this first verse by simply letting us know that despite him not showing himself a lot throughout the album, he's always been there in the background. He's the one who's been hiding in the cracks in Tyler's mind, begging to be let loose. And now that he has, if someone were to ask Tyler what his name was, he wouldn't be himself anymore, he'd be Igor. The chorus is fairly simple, with Igor simply stating the claim that what he says is purely facts, and that it's not his role to start playing around and sugarcoating things or worry about them, much like Tyler tends to do. As we go into the second verse, Igor continues to describe the effect he has on the physical world when he's allowed to take over Tyler's mind and control his attitudes. For example, like where he says the cops were looking at him jigsaw, obviously telling us that they were confused at how Tyler was acting. Let's not forget also that this is twice on the song already that Igor has brought up the police, with the second time also referencing a jigsaw, like these cops are trying to piece together something. With Tyler's clever and intentional wordplay all throughout the album, I don't think it's a mistake either that this could be relating to the serial killer Jigsaw from the Saw movies, someone who, much like Igor, lurks in the background for the most part and only re-emerges when necessary. With all these pieces added up, I'm willing to say that this song represents Igor taking control of Tyler and actually going through with the plans that were set out in New Magic Wand, the only other song on the album up to this point who featured Igor. We can see this backed up when we look further into the second verse, when Igor starts mentioning how he's killed this other person and has now become the person in charge of Tyler's mind, and even says in the next line, get caught, bitch I think not. This line obviously backing up my theory that Igor has killed this other person in the love triangle, however has managed to get away with it. The rest of the second verse is yet again dedicated to Igor bigging himself up and comparing himself to a godlike figure, whilst also implicitly stating that he's merely in control of Tyler's mind. He's got new clothes and new boots, but he's still in Tyler's body. We then get taken back to the chorus once again, however before going back to the third verse, all instrumentation gets turned down, and in replacement, we get a jagged, distorted guitar erratically pushing out notes, representing this distorted and twisted mindset that Igor shares. We then have the introduction of another guest feature on this album, with slow tie building up to the third verse by repeating the phrase, I see the light. I believe this is meant for two different contexts, one of them obviously being the enlightenment Igor feels in this moment where he's eliminated this other person in the love triangle, however I believe it could also be referencing something which is instead brought up in the fourth verse which we'll touch on when we get to it. This build up leads to an explosion of sound as we're ruthlessly dragged into this bombastic third verse. We start off with Igor comparing himself to Dracula, telling us that this other person in the love triangle bit him first by trying to take away his lover, so Igor feels justified in biting back, resulting in this other person being killed by him. This is backed up when the camera and photograph metaphors are brought back up, when Igor tells us to check the aperture, referring to the aperture setting on a camera. It seems like this constant reaffirmation going on in the mind of Igor, where it almost seems like he needs us to believe the actions he's taken have been justified, in order to let himself know that his thoughts are truly focused, and he truly has been enlightened and can see the light. We can also see this contrast between Igor and Tyler in lines like, sick of that Claren talk, I'm on my third one, where Igor shows an active distaste to the metaphors, symbolism, and overall importance of cars in Tyler's life. As I said before, this may have something to do with the more primitive and animalistic nature of the Igor character, with him being a lot more blatant with the things he is saying in the lyrics. He's also closed-minded on the most fundamental level, where he's not going to let anything or anyone sway him from what he's setting out to achieve. 
We could already assume this, but it can also be backed up with this final line where he talks about people talking to him despite him showing no acknowledgement to them. We then get taken back to the chorus with the repetition of the phrase, I see the light being reintroduced to really reinforce the point that Igor thinks what he's done and how he's acting is perfectly in the right and only ever could be right, despite it not necessarily being true. We get the sense that once Igor's presence has disintegrated and fell back into Tyler's subconscious, Tyler will have to deal with the consequences of Igor's actions. In this fourth and final verse, we can hear Igor take his final stand pretty much for the entire album, talking about his presence in Tyler's mind and almost flaunting the power and control he has over Tyler. With the first line of this verse, Igor gives us the impression that Tyler would much rather be free of Igor and the thoughts he plants inside his head, by almost taunting him, by saying that the real life car crash that Tyler suffered in October 2018 still wasn't enough to get rid of Igor. He continues throughout this verse to essentially taunt Tyler over this prospect, mentioning how Tyler closed his eyes due to lack of sleep and crashed his car resulting in a loud sound. However, Tyler was left with zero scratches on him, which he thanks to Elon Musk, as the car he was driving was a Tesla. In the final lines of this verse, Igor takes his aim away from Tyler and instead to the artists involved in the current musical climate, claiming that these people who are below his level of popularity are greedy and hungry for fame, even if they don't deserve it. Igor in turn throws this back in their face by saying that he's not dead and that he's not going to give up his position in the music world as easily as they think. He goes on to compare these other artists to Helen Keller, an educator and political activist who was both blind and deaf. By comparing his competition to her, he's claiming that these people are arrogant and ignorant to even think or attempt to get to a position of not only popularity compared to him, but also the level of creativity and artistry in his music. And with that, what's good comes to a close. However, before we get taken to the next track, we are left off with one final line with the reintroduction of Carmichael's spoken word being brought back once more. In this final line, Carmichael's words allude to Tyler finally being done with the relationship, as the words echo the sentiment of having to let go of something that you don't necessarily want to. And as we can see by the title of the next song, Gone Gone Thank You, it seems like the relationship between Tyler and his lover has finally come to an end. As we enter the first first part of the track Gone Gone, we can hear that Igor's presence has gone, and we are instead reintroduced to Tyler's sentimental and high pitch vocals, which we've heard several times previously on the album. He starts off this first verse by referencing something that we saw mentioned in his previous album Flower Boy, when he starts bringing up different months and the kind of emotions he feels in relation to them. If we look back to Flower Boy, and specifically the song November, we could see from the lyrics that the November that Tyler is referring to was less to do with the actual month and more to do with a specific moment in time where only pure bliss and happiness was felt. So in reality, the actual month doesn't matter. Tyler simply uses it as a metaphor to describe his point, and uses this specific point of time in his life as his own example of what his personal November is. Looking back to the lyrics here, we can see Tyler is using the parallel of December in order to show how much his lover impacted his life. Tyler's mindset was set in December, a time we think of being cold and dark. However, when his lover was introduced into his life, it was like a ray of sunshine beamed into Tyler's December, and gave him a sense of bliss that he may have seen as impossible to achieve. However, in the next line, we can see Tyler question if this happened in his August as opposed to his December, again showing us this confusion and flip-flopping between thoughts, but also telling us that Tyler must have been in this bad mindset for a while, as he implies by getting the two of these months mixed up, that they equate to the same sad emotions being shared in the both of them. As we go further into this first verse, Tyler essentially reveals that this song represents the breakup, or rather the aftermath of the breakup between him and his lover, as he takes a reflective look upon the situation they were both in, and starts going back to the origin of their relationship. When Tyler met his lover and got to know them, he claimed his temperature was already set, which is being used as a metaphor to describe how Tyler's mindset and the actions he was going to take in the relationship were already set from the start. Tyler couldn't shake himself out of his poor headspace and did the worst thing he could do in this relationship and projected and took it out on his lover via his jealousy and insecurities. 
As a result, his lover finally had to take a stand of their own, much like Tyler thought he's been doing throughout the album, and finally chose to end the relationship and fly south. Tyler compares this to a bird leaving the nest, which also relates to the well-known phrase, all good things come to an end. Because of how Tyler's mind was working at the time, they got into a relationship, and through no fault of his own, he knew this was eventually going to come to an end, and that it would be on his head. However, rather than taking the necessary steps to make sure it could last as long as possible, Tyler instead focused their entire relationship around trust, loyalty, and let his insecurities get the better of him, as opposed to just enjoying the time he was spending with his lover. It seems like Tyler is now aware of this, and we can tell this not only from his vocal delivery, but also the content in the lyrics. But it seems like in this moment of time, Tyler is okay with it. Although, as we've seen many times previously in the album, there's no doubt that he'll flip-flop back and forth on these feelings in the future. It's a rare and nice moment on the album to take the good things for what they are, focusing on the positive of having these good feelings rather than never experiencing them at all. We get taken to the chorus sung by CeeLo Green, which shares this same positive sentiment that the first verse just left off on. Tyler has obviously reflected on what Carmichael mentioned at the end of the previous track, of just letting go and being okay with the bad situation which was Tyler and his lover's relationship, and for the first time on the album has put his personal emotions and physical condition to the forefront of his mind, completely removed from having any relation to his lover. Even though his love is gone, which is a sad thing, and even though Tyler doesn't want to believe it, trying to tell himself that this could all possibly just be a bad dream, with or without them, Tyler's going to be okay by himself. We then get taken to the second verse, where Tyler starts off with a more maudlin attitude, by quietly saying to himself that love is all he's got. This goes against his previous lyrics where he described he would be okay without his lover. However, before we can develop on this contradiction, Tyler almost cuts off that thought process to focus on the new person his lover is getting into a relationship with. It would be in Tyler's best interest to just move on from the situation completely. However, he's keeping himself in this sadness by comparing himself to this other person. He starts off by hoping that this new person has a good taste in music, as well as in general, but also claims at the end that she can't compete with him, which is a positive thing to see in relation to Tyler's mind, as it shows us that he hasn't lost complete confidence in himself, which was possible after being overlooked by his lover. Tyler's discovered that the prospect of losing his lover was much worse and more detrimental than the reality, and although it hurts, Tyler can still function as his own person, despite the previous songs on the album saying otherwise. We continue on, hearing the chorus once again before being brought to a bridge. Here we can see the reintroduction of Tyler's more worried and stressful part of his mind. Whereas he spent most of this song saying that he's going to be okay, here we can see him compare his lover to a band-aid, claiming that they're keeping him together, however it's starting to fall off. Off. Tyler continues with this band-aid metaphor in the final lyric where he claims that he's been scarred for life, not only relating to the literal example of a wound being untreated with any medical assistance leaving a scar on the physical body, but also relating to a scar on Tyler's mental state, the result of this relationship leaving Tyler broken and unfulfilled, most likely with numerous trust issues and a general sense of uneasiness going forward with his life. This would not only have an effect on Tyler and the loved ones who are still there for him, but also on Tyler's hopes and dreams of getting into a future relationship, thinking that he's been screwed over once so it can easily happen again. This heartbreak is going to permeate through Tyler's attitude, and how he's going to continue on with his life and career. The song then has a descending key change, with the introduction of the interlude where the phrase, my love is gone, is repeated. This can be linked to the most realistic and honest side of Tyler we're going to see in this third and final verse. He starts this verse off by laying out his current state of affairs, and his overall mindset in relation to the situation, claiming that he feels stupid either for trying to make the relationship work, or perhaps even being in the relationship at all. He then responds to someone's question, asking where his love's gone, by saying that they walked outside the front door. However, unlike every other time on the album which relates to his lover leaving, Tyler for the first time doesn't blame anyone else or any outside force, and says that he's not shocked. It's his fault and that he brought it on himself. He continues to say that he's been taught a lesson, by bringing up a metaphor that was previously brought up on the song Pothole from Flower Boy. Tyler mentions how the weatherman told him it wasn't raining, however he brought umbrellas anyway. This metaphor tells us how Tyler was overstressing, overthinking, and overcompensating throughout their entire relationship because he constantly thought it was falling apart, which is represented by raining. However, what Tyler didn't realise was that the weather was sunny, so most of the time when he was putting up 
a front and panicking about the state of their relationship, it was mostly unnecessary. Tyler then begins to reflect on their relationship, whilst also continuing on with this theme of the weather representing the state of their relationship. He explains how he saw his lover's cloud and it made him feel better. He continues on saying that it was 90 degrees, making it clearer that the cloud represented shade from this metaphorical hot and stressful weather that Tyler was experiencing in his life at that point. However, with their relationship being over, in retrospect, all the tricks that Tyler had up his sleeve in order to win his lover back over to him again are all drenched in sweat because the shade that his lover's cloud was providing has now gone away. Tyler's coming to terms that the relationship really is over this time. And as we can see, he's finally holding himself accountable for this, saying that the reason the cloud is gone and now he's hot and sweaty again is because of the tendency he has to jump to conclusions, which can also be backed up by all of the previous songs on the album. Tyler then jumps back to the present and looks at the situation both him and his lover are now in. He starts this off with what seems like an extremely bitter comment by saying that his lover has got his new thing with their new relationship but Tyler has nothing but memories they had together. Backing that line up by saying Tyler knows their secrets, holding this over their head like some sort of blackmail. These secrets could be referring to numerous things, however the one that stands out to me would be the countless times his lover is implied to be a man who wants to get out of the relationship with Tyler in pursuit of a heterosexual relationship with a woman. Perhaps this is Tyler holding his lover's past relationship relationships over their head. Tyler then recognises this bitterness within himself, and tries to counteract it by saying that this all happened for a reason as a result of his own actions in their relationship, taking a more level-headed and reasonable approach to the situation. Tyler once again uses clever wordplay in the upcoming lyrics, to describe what happened in their relationship and why it didn't work out how he intended, by comparing it to the construction and destruction of physical things. He starts off by saying that they had two different blueprints, representing their different attitudes and states of mind when first getting into the relationship with each other. He continues on to say that whatever his lover's blueprint was building, it opened up early, referring to his lover being true and honest about their emotions to Tyler early on in their relationship, with Tyler rightfully thinking that he had a permit to engage and talk about it with them. His lover then began to build a bridge away from Tyler, showing the distance that they began to have when the relationship became more toxic, as well as the connection his lover was starting to make with this other girl. This bridge then turned into a fence, representing how his lover blocked Tyler out of his life due to how bad the relationship got, instead choosing to pursue this other girl. Finally, Tyler's building, which represents his emotions and connection to his lover, finally gets torn down at the realisation of their breakup, and that his lover has moved on to another relationship with someone other than him. He then ends off this verse by saying that he'll just buy up some new shit, which would mean Tyler getting into a new relationship, and finishes things on mostly good terms by saying that although he still thought his lover was not being completely open and honest with him during his entire relationship, he's still happy he got to experience it with them, as opposed to the relationship never happening at all. This ends the Gone Gone section of the song, as we get transported to the second half of the song, Thank You. This segment starts off with another piece of Carmichael's spoken word, this time talking about wasted potential and how it can not only crush the spirit of the people involved, but also people who witness it. This is obviously referring to Tyler Tyler and his lover's relationship having the chance to bloom into something beautiful despite it eventually ending up falling apart. This is Tyler's closing statement on their relationship, repeatedly thanking his lover for the love and joy that was given to him. However, in Tyler's eyes, every part of their relationship was so perfect that he looks at the prospect of falling in love again, at least with someone else, to be impossible. Tyler acknowledges the good times in their relationship, however would also fear to get into another one because of how this one panned out, especially considering if this is what Tyler considers to be his dream relationship. In the bridge, we can hear the re-emergence of the line, I've got my eyes open, which we first heard all the way back on the track Igor's theme, making us feel like we've embarked on a full journey, connecting everything and coming full circle. Tyler then repeats the same lines, thanking his lover until the song comes to a close. This leads us into the penultimate track, I Don't Love You Anymore, and as we can see by the title, Tyler is reinforcing the fact that he's moving on from his past relationship. However, that was mainly the point of Gone Gone Thank You, so seeing it re-emerge would seem a bit pointless. However, as we'll see as we start to dive into the lyrics, Tyler has once again gone back on his emotions and original intent as he starts to begin to lie to himself about how he's feeling about the situation once again. 
We start off by going straight into the first verse, with Tyler's lyrics being caked under a layer of distortion, as well as having him almost mumble through his bars. It's clear that he's now realised the reality of the situation, and what we're seeing is the after effects of how he's actually coping with the predicament he's found himself in. From what we can gather from the first verse, Tyler is still not over the relationship, which is okay, because it only happened very recently. He then starts to lie to himself by saying that there's plenty of fish in the sea, and that he's wanting and willing to just go find someone new. Something that we know for a fact is not true in Tyler's case. Tyler then claims his shit is bumping, possibly referring to his music and this peak of fame he's found himself in after Flower Boy's release. But he then uses that as an excuse to ignore and deny his emotions and not walk around with his head down, looking sad and unenthusiastic, because he most likely thinks that the general public will look at him with all his money and popularity and think he's not entitled to feel these things. Tyler ends this verse off by saying to his ex that they can do them and he can do him, which seems like everything's okay, and that Tyler's moved on. Until you realise that if Tyler really wanted to move on, he'd take the previous signals with his lover breaking up with him, going off with someone else, and Tyler saying peace on the last track and move on. Tyler's literally already said goodbye on the last track, and now he's come back to his ex only to say goodbye again. Obviously hedging his bets in a last ditch effort to get his ex to feel any sort of way towards him. In the chorus, Tyler repeats the line, I don't love you anymore, something that we can see through so easily to be untrue, as Tyler still has these deep rooted feelings and connections to their relationship. Tyler's lying to himself in the hopes that it will make him move on to someone else, or let his mind focus on something other than their relationship. We then get taken to a bridge, where Tyler questions where the time's gone and how he needs a location. This would show how after their relationship ended, Tyler feels lost and confused, which can also be backed up by the several ums and ers that we heard on the first verse, showing Tyler's disorientated and unfocused mindset. He also pairs this with this loss of time, not only referring to the time he felt that was wasted on both of their parts for being in a relationship that eventually ended, but also the time that he's currently wasting by keeping himself locked away in this unhappy and lamenting mindset, focusing on how he wishes he could still be in the relationship and how he could have done things differently, as opposed to just being okay with the situation. In this second and final verse, Tyler takes a half-hearted look on how he's going to personally deal with moving on, starting off by asking how he can even move on, claiming that his feelings have been put in the lost and found, obviously representing how lost and confused Tyler feels after losing his relationship. He ends this verse off by repeating how he thinks he's going to be stuck in this lost mindset forever, a rather bleak way to bring the song to a close. However, before we transition into the final track, we hear a final piece of dialogue from Tyler where he seems to be speaking to his ex, telling them that something might be better for both of them. We aren't sure what this something is until we look at the final track on the album, Are We Still Friends, where it becomes clear Tyler is finally, properly setting himself up to move on, accepting his loss of a romantic relationship, however also accepting that he can't force himself to move on from his ex fully, so instead goes the route of trying to be at peace with them and try to go for a friendship instead. In this final and relatively simple track, Tyler wraps up this album at most probably his lowest point that we've seen him. Even though he's been stressed out, anxious, angry and jealous, he can at least claim that he was in a situation which he signed up for, and that he would rather be in than having nothing at all. But by this point, Tyler's already lost everything, with his own motivation, self-worth and confidence being the biggest blows towards Tyler continuing to move forward as the person he once was. We enter the track with a slow, chilled out R&B sample from Al Green's Dream, leading us into a false sense of security, making us think that this song will be Tyler coming to terms with where he is and trying to start a new friendship with his ex, which is far from what we get in the upcoming lyrics. We get the first substantial lyrics when we get brought to the chorus, where Tyler repeats the title of Are We Still Friends, yearning for the smallest moments of interaction with his ex, for example like shaking their hand or even just saying saying hi. This is where we can start to see the more depressing and realistic side of this track, where Tyler simply can't admit that their relationship is completely over, still wanting to interact with his ex who's already moved on. It reinforces the messages that we saw on Puppet, where Tyler sung lyrics like, I do not have self-control. I'm starting to wonder, is this my free will or yours? I'm your puppet, you control me. Everything's starting to come full circle in the worst way possible, where we see the culmination of all of 
Tyler's flip-flopping and realizations throughout the album pretty much all going to waste. There were real moments of enlightenment on this album, with Tyler being true to himself and planting his feet down in reality, as opposed to the jealous and self-conscious one that we tended to find himself in during most of the album. We get taken to the first verse on this track, where Tyler cries out to his ex in the most lamenting and sorrowful tone that we've heard on this album. He's accepted that he can't stop his ex from leaving him in the dust and not wanting to be his friend. Tyler's trying to come to terms with this fact that he no longer has an influence on his ex's life. However, with how long it's already taken him throughout this album, it seems he still hasn't been able to find an appropriate resolution to this problem. However, in the lyrics that follow, Tyler does acknowledge that the relationship they had together was not healthy, as he tells his ex that like themselves, he was in the toxic relationship too, and perhaps it was a good thing that it finally came to an end, as Tyler says that he couldn't die too whilst being stuck in that relationship. He ends the verse off by saying that he has to know, before repeating the chorus once again, showing us with all the truth bombs as well as lies that Tyler throws at himself, as well as us the listeners, it still at no point has swayed him away from trying to achieve some sort of relationship with his ex, no matter how minuscule it may be. Tyler then repeats the chorus two more times before going into the second and final verse, this time essentially begging his ex not to leave. He starts off by telling his ex not to get green skin, which would refer to the green skin that's typically associated with aliens, making us aware that Tyler can see his ex getting more distant and out of touch with him. He then backs this up in the next line where he tells him to keep contact instead of saying goodbye. This is truly the saddest we've seen Tyler, possibly in his entire discography, and Tyler Tyler even acknowledges this, saying that he doesn't want to end this season on a bad episode. The season referring to the two year schedule that Tyler has stuck to religiously when releasing new projects, with him not wanting to end this one on a sour and depressing note, especially when comparing it to the wholly optimistic, beautiful and reflective end to Flower Boy the previous season. In these final lyrics, it seems like we're hearing these bars from the perspective of Tyler's mind, or at least some outside perspective that is laying the situation that Tyler's in bluntly. Tyler is bouncing back and forth with his emotions constantly, not knowing what is right and wrong, and most likely losing all perception of how he genuinely feels anymore due to how lost and confused he is. So he's been trapped in this perpetual cycle of hurt where he can't seem to fall away from it to a place of true enlightenment and bliss. With everything he's already experienced in this album, not only at the fault of the toxic relationship he was involved in, but also at the fault of his conduct towards the situation, with the character of Igor taking control over Tyler in certain points of the album, Tyler feels drained of any sort of power that he thought he may have gained from his time working his way up in popularity in the music business. He's been caught in this situation due to aspects like how he can't accept the truth, how he wants things to go back to the way they once were, despite that not being plausible or real reasonable, and Tyler hates this reality, however it's simply the truest way to look at the situation. He ends this verse off by giving us perhaps a glint of hope that things could change in the future, by telling us that he could be free from this tough and stressful situation he found himself in, instead of trying to fight it and change things that he only thinks will make him happier. The chorus is repeated once more, before giving us the final lyrics of Can't Say Goodbye, with the tortured screams of Tyler being interspersed in between, leaving us off on a truly depressing note, showing that everything we just experienced simply tortured Tyler's mental state, with there not being much of a resolution to be seen by the end of it. This ending doesn't pull any punches, and as Tyler said, although he doesn't want to end this season on a bad episode, sometimes that's just the way things pan out. And that is my full analysis of Tyler the Creator's Igor. Three months this took. Th three, three months. But I mean, I hope it was worth the wait. If you guys enjoyed this video, a like, subscribe, and especially a share to a friend who might also be interested would be hugely appreciated and help support my channel majorly, which in turn lets me make more of this content that you guys enjoy. More videos will be coming in quick succession this time, with the long break that I took for this one being my usual lack of motivation at times, as well as me genuinely taking a long time to research and write the script. Anyways, as I said, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.